From finance to document fees to no haggle pricing, we're here to answer questions from the Homework Guy viewers today. Thanks for joining us on this special broadcast. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the Homework Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? This broadcast brought to you by YouTube's best channel on car buying and selling, courtesy of the Homework Guy team and our super high intensity training for car buyers. Check the merch shelf below if you want to get one of these cool shirts or hoodies like this one. Before we get into the discussion today, covering a number of car buying questions and comments, a couple things I'd like to share with you. If you have a car buying experience you'd like to share with our audience in an upcoming broadcast, send us an email to info at thehomeworkguy.com and put guest appearance request in the subject line. That email will get directly forwarded to me. Also, if you're a current salesman, finance officer, used car manager, new car manager, maybe a trainer in the industry, a general manager, or a dealer owner, and you have a good positive message to share with our viewers, we'll give you the stage on our show as well. We'll be glad to do our part to promote the good guys in the car business. For those of you joining us on the live premiere, our staff is monitoring the chat room. Ask your questions, comments, or suggestions. Now is your time for live feedback from the Homer Guy team on anything that's on your mind. All right, let's get started with a common question about document fees. Brenda writes, I see you always say that the state doc fee should be no more than $75, but it varies by state. I checked on Google for Illinois, but it says that as of January 2020, dealer doc fee limits increased from $166 to $301 because the title fee is $150 and the car registration fee is another $151. Is this what the document fee should be in Illinois then? Seems crappy to be double the amount from literally the rest of the country, so I wonder if I'm missing something here. Hashtag the Homer guy. First of all, the title fee and the car registration fee are state fees, has nothing to do with a document fee. And there's comments from some others here on the channel that help clarify what you should be doing with a dealer doc fee and why I say no more than $75 and how to accomplish that regardless of what the document fee may be in your given state or what your dealer is expecting. Alfred writes, excellent content as always. A year ago, I helped my daughter buy her first car. She was aghast when the first dealer said to her, let's go. The salesman started being cute with add-on fees after we negotiated the final price. A few months ago, we tried again. Did our homework and went to five different dealerships before we got a solid deal. One dealer refused to take off the $1,200 dealer prep fee and the $399 electronic filing fee. Well, first of all, this $399 electronic filing fee is the exact same thing as a document fee, but look how Alfred handles this. As per your suggestion, talking about the homework guy, I said, fine, then take it off the price of the car instead. He did it. In the end, we paid $1,000 less than what our homework indicated the out-the-door price should have been. Thanks, Kevin. And then also on this subject, not stupid, who's clearly not stupid because this is great uh, feedback, says, they will say equal opportunity law says that if we charge one person the fee, we have to charge everyone else to be fair. It's the law. And your answer should be no problem. Charge the fees and deduct the amount from the price of the car or I'm out. Then leave. They will call you back. So both Alfred and Not Stupid got this totally right. If they tell you that the document fee has to be a given amount, just tell them to take it out of the price of the car and then go ahead and list it on the contract. So very simply resolved just take the excess charges right out of the price of the car. Agent West writes, beat your car salesman with one simple question. Where's your parts department? They won't bother you for the rest of the time you're there, even if you're looking at cars they have for sale. <laughs> this, is, this is great advice. Agent West has a really valid point here. If you ask for the parts department, salespeople on the showroom floor don't like people who are looking for parts at all. So even if you spend time browsing around the showroom, if you just keep mentioning to people that you're just here for parts, they're going to leave you alone immediately. He also mentions, as a side note, I was wondering why some of the tactics of this video sound familiar. Then I remembered that a certain green auto parts store uses them on their customers. In other words, watch out anywhere you have to deal with sales reps. They are not your friends. So true. BD writes, hey, Homer guy, thanks for your assistance. I'm not sure if you guys noticed. I'm sure I'm one of many, but I've been commenting a lot on your videos. You guys answer every single one with great advice or with a direct link to a video that provides a thorough answer to the question. Well, you guys helped me close. I didn't go hard enough to get that $75 doc fee, but every other tip was used and I still got $100 off the car out of those pesky fees. I saved, depending upon how you look at it, between one and 4,000 just by taking out my phone, doing out the terms of the loan, and telling the finance officer, these numbers are wrong. This is the price I will be paying for my 36 month loan. The form made it seem like many of their coverage options were mandatory. That's correct, they always do that. 
It was their version of BS warranties. I love seeing this grown man wince when I told him my own monthly payment and that I don't want any of those coverage options. He was so uncomfortable while he typed stuff in too. He kept asking if I needed anything like 15 times. Yeah, when you're taking notes and typing anything into your computer or whatever you brought with you or your phone, yeah, the guy's going to get really nervous. I still went the CPO route, which makes the coverage he was vulturing for even worse, so I had a pretty comprehensive warranty still. For a 22-year-old buying their first car, I'm pretty happy getting a 2018 used car within $1,000 of the KBB private party middle value. Maybe I could have really gone hard for another $700, but, but hey, I outfinanced a 50-plus-year-old I'm happy. If you want input for a video on what it's like being a first-time buyer, using your advice, I'd be happy to do an interview and something and provide feedback down the road. We may well have this young man on our channel here soon sharing his story. This is fabulous. A first-time buyer, you guys, not having experience like some of you out there do. He used a lot of our videos, used our advice, went out and got himself a great car deal. Congratulations. Charlie writes, great advice, but if you're paying cash and you shouldn't actually bring cash, how are you paying? Don't think they will eat credit card fees on a high dollar transaction and a personal check may not fly either. Well, A. Jennings helps answer this a little bit. I've been writing personal checks for nearly 40 years on cars costing as much as 60000 Bingo. There you go. They will take a personal check. They'll also take a business check. They'll take a cashier's check. They'll take a bank check. You can do a bank transfer. You can use a debit card. You just have to call your bank beforehand and make sure they up the amount that you can put on a debit card in a day's time. But a lot of different ways you can pay cash without having greenbacks in your hand. Don Smith writes, the new scam I've now heard twice is to be told that adding services and warranties can be done without affecting your payment. How can you say no? Well, because the payment you are quoted when you first met the finance person already included those services you wouldn't otherwise agree to buy. That is exactly right. The payment they gave you right up front included all the junk you were going to say no to for those of you who had done your homework. You thought you were told the payment amount for just the car, which is wrong. I discovered this on close reading of my contract when I got home, when confronted, the finance man had me fill out a form that went to Ford Credit to take the extra $2,600 off my loan, but it didn't lower my payment. The months to pay off just ended a little sooner. Anytime they tell you that it won't affect your payment, you are being lied to about the payment in the first place. Exactly right. He hit the nail right on the head. That first payment that comes out from the finance guy is a payment that includes all kinds of fees and products you are likely to say no to when you go into finance. More on finance from the Atomic Turnip. I can tell you why some dealers want you to finance. We were looking at buying a car at a local dealership and they brought out a finance agreement, which they wouldn't let us read. They wouldn't tell us the APR, the repayments, or indeed anything about it. Just that we had to sign it and then everything would be okay. We asked the APR. They said, you don't need to know that. It's needless to. Hogwash. This is some incredible arrogance on the part of this finance man. But this is the kind of boneheaded things that car buyers are subjected to. And this finance guy needs to find a new career. This person writes, just purchased a Toyota RAV4 2016 last week. Took Kevin's advice as best I could and didn't tell the dealer how he's going to pay for the car. Once a price was agreed upon, I discussed financing and was given a low rate, signed all the paperwork and left. Next day, arrived to pick up the car and I met a financial guy who tells me the rate has gone up. So I'm pissed and tell him I want to cancel the deal. So he goes into the office, comes out and congratulates me. They will honor the signed interest rate. My question, is this something that's common? I was told that because I didn't buy the extended warranty, the bank had changed the rate. Can the dealer change the rate once I sign off on the paperwork? Thanks. Well, I already wrote a response to this question. No, they can't change the rate. They're waiting for your response. If you had said, okay, they would have reprinted everything with the marked up rate on it because you authorized it. There's no connection to the extended warranty here. There's no connection to the bank. What there is is a connection to complete dishonesty. The other point that I want to make on this situation, if, if you noticed, the guy signs all the paperwork. He left. He had not taken delivery on the car. This is really important because if you ever want to review a contract, do not drive the car over the curb on the way out of the dealership, and you can still fix and change things even if you have signed the paperwork. Mark writes, I just bought a new Honda HRV. The dealer did not want me to leave without the car today, even though I was going to pay cash when the bank transfer came in next week. In order to get the car today, I had to take out a loan. He told me that there was no penalty if I paid the loan off in 90 days. Well, this took him over an hour to research and do the paperwork. 
The next day when I had the money, I went to the dealership to pay off the loan. They didn't want it. I had to contact the finance company. I found out the loan had interest charges from day one. So I paid off the loan via the internet, a bank transfer that day. In short, they did all the paperwork and got a whopping $4.49 in interest charges for a one-week loan. There never was a penalty in the loan. Here's the interesting thing. You need to read the fine print on any loan papers you ever signed to look for early payment penalties. But many times the finance guy will tell you verbally that of course there's a penalty for early payoff and it's because they want you to keep the loan so they can keep earning this interest. As Mark has pointed out here, $4.49 a week. Jeff Miller writes, one approach you didn't mention, which I've seen twice over the years, is the dealer gives you final paperwork you agreed to. Then he says, I'll just need to make some copies. He walks away for 30 minutes to make those copies, and then when he comes back, he gives you the contract to sign. The contract you're signing now doesn't have the same numbers that were on the contract he went to copy. And of course, it's been increased in their favor, in the dealership's favor. I recommend taking a picture with your phone of the contract when he leaves and compare it to the one when he comes back. This is exactly right. A finance guy claiming that he has to go make copies is going to go change the contract. And because you thought you already read it, you just sign and walk away and cha-ching, they just pocketed more money at your expense. Completely dishonest, but finance guys are known for all kinds of tricks like this. The dirtiest guys in the car dealership. If you're a first timer on the Homework Guy channel, consider subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Add hashtag the Homework Guy if you'd like a response directly from Kevin or one of the Homework Guy staff members. We're always glad to help our loyal followers and the best part is, there's no charge. You can also email the team at info at thehomeworkguy.com with a specific question, or if you'd like a free contract review, just black out your personal information and send it to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just be aware that we do get a lot of requests, so just be patient while you wait for a response. Back to you, Kevin. Lucinda Brown writes, question. When should one let the salesman or the finance personnel know you have the down payment? How can you keep them from turning your down payment against you? Well, I wrote in response here, letting them know that you have cash down isn't a bad thing. However, make sure that doesn't result in them packing your loan full of nonsense products and fees. It can happen. Read all the fine print and then call a friend before you sign anything. That is so important, you guys. Read all the fine print and then call a friend before you sign anything. Make sure you do that. I mentioned that in my last video, but make sure you have somebody who's outside the dealership that you can call and talk to and go through the fine print with because there's a really good chance they've done something in this car contract and you need somebody who's not emotionally involved to help you out on the thing. But here, when you mention this cash down payment, especially if it's a sizable amount, dealers are always working with their own banks on something called LTV. It's a loan to value ratio. And when they get a really good loan to value ratio, and then all of a sudden you say you're gonna add some additional cash into this, watch them start packing the back end with fees and products to try to get rid of your down payment. When you're talking about cash down, always make sure that it shows up on your contract and that you suddenly aren't being hit with a whole bunch of fees and products so that the dealer can pocket more money at your expense. Kale writes, so I got a loan from my bank. Do I lie to the salesperson and pretend that I don't already have a loan? If they know I have a loan, I feel like they won't give me a discount. John also says, this is my dilemma too. I hate to lie, but if it saves me money, I guess I have to. I wrote a response to this. You don't have to lie. If asked about financing, you just say, I'm qualified to buy the car I'm looking for. I'll see what you have to offer regarding financing when the time comes. For now, I want to focus on what kind of car I need and the bottom line price. That's not a lie. And I don't suggest you guys lie about having your own financing. Just say, that's not my conversation or that's not my focus right now. I want to look at what car I need and what the bottom line price is. And we'll talk about financing after all of that. So again, even if you have your own financing, you can still consider what they have to offer. When their banking doesn't beat yours, well, just use your own option. Pretty simple. Jeff writes, how about a video on working on a deal on a vehicle you want to order? Along the same lines, Ann writes, this was great information, the homework guy. Hey, Kevin, can you do an episode on ordering a car with exactly what the customer wants on the car and to ensure you don't get burned? I've never actually done that, so I don't know if you can do it online with the company itself or if you have to do it with whatever dealership that's available. I'm also aware of sites where you can order a car like Carvana or Cars Direct, but will they prevent all the added garbage that many dealerships attempt to add on? Well, let's go back to the order here, first of all, because there's many parts here. It is to the benefit of the dealer, and the manufacturers love this as well when you do an order, because that is a vehicle that the manufacturer can build. It's already sold. It comes to the dealership, 
and you're taking delivery on this. So for many dealers, they get to add this vehicle in as an additional vehicle they'd be bringing to the lot. It works in their favor to have a custom order. So never be intimidated about doing a custom order and always negotiate it exactly as if the car were sitting right on the car lot. Make sure that you do that because ordering is not a favor to you from the dealer. You ordering is a favor to the dealer. So it's the other way around. Make sure that you negotiate this right down. Now let's talk real briefly about Carvana and Cars Direct. Carvana is basically a, a vending process. And there's not a lot of nonsense that's happening on the back end of this. So you go online, you find the car, you buy it, you go to the vendor, it's dispensed to you. You can drive it around, have a mechanic look at it. You got seven days to return this car. So they have a seven day return policy. Here's what some people say is that the price of a Carvana car will be slightly higher than the price of a car somewhere else. But if you look at the total cost, I'm talking about after you go through finance and everything else with another dealer, and instead you buy a car from Carvana and you don't have to deal with any of that nonsense regarding finance after the deal, I think in many cases, a Carvana vehicle for a lot less headache will end up being a cheaper car in the end for you. I'd really recommend that you take a look at them and places like Cars Direct as well. Give them a shot because you will save a lot of headaches dealing with the finance guys. Donovan writes, use a VPN problem solved. Anytime you're using public Wi-Fi anywhere, you should be using a VPN. He's responding to a video that we just did on free dealer Wi-Fi. And I want to talk about this because the whole point of the video was, if you sit down in a dealership and use their free dealer Wi-Fi and suddenly you start noticing that sites like KBB and cars.com and Carfax are being blocked on their Wi-Fi, the whole purpose of the video was not to tell you to find ways to defeat their screening or the censoring of these sites. The entire point of the video was to tell you that if the dealer is trying to hide these sites on their free Wi-Fi, you're sitting in a crooked dealer. Get out of your chair and leave. Go give your business to good dealers instead of sitting there using a VPN or your cell data or whatever and trying to get around this. So if you didn't see the video, go back and see it. The title of the video is Red Flag Car Dealerships. The point of the video is that if they're covering these sites up on their free Wi-Fi, you need to get up and leave, not try to use a VPN or to use cell data to defeat their censorship. You're sitting in a crooked dealer. Get out. Marco the Man writes, Man, this is so good. Can I just pay you to come and negotiate my deal? The homework guy doesn't offer four higher services for anything. We are essentially producing videos for free to help consumers with their car buying process. So feel free to ask questions here on videos like this or our premiere videos or email us, however you'd like. But the biggest thing I'd suggest is subscribe to the channel, watch the content we put up. And as I mentioned just a short time ago on a video, if you're out car shopping, make sure before you leave the dealership that you go out somewhere, get some privacy and have a friend who's not at the dealership that you can call and walk through that car contract. That's the very best help that you can get and is going to be just as good is having me do this as well. So watch the video, Red Flag Dealerships, and check that out. There's also a video right before that, 16 ways shady dealerships can steal from you. Go back and look at that video, watch it, because in there is a suggestion on what to do to make sure that you get credible help. But unfortunately, you can't hire the homework guy to help you with a car deal. You can bring in a friend. Make sure you use that option, it's genius. Ricky writes, I work at a car dealership. This is definitely true at a lot of places. I could start a YouTube page with all the stories that people come in telling us about other places screwing them over and a lot that don't even know they're screwed till we look at the paperwork and tell them what the other place did to them to make it impossible for us to trade it in. But I do what I can to help the customer. We do not add any extra fees to cash or finance and we don't mark up the rates. Go into dealerships educated and careful and don't get screwed over, but not all of us are bad. Great point, Ricky here, and I can tell all of my viewers that based on the content and what Ricky shared here, this is a good guy in the car business. And Ricky, I would invite you to come on our show at some point down the road. Make sure you're one of the people who send us an email and put, guest appearance request in there and we'll have a conversation with you down the road we can protect your identity what dealership you're at etc you don't have to do that stuff but come join us on on an upcoming show and we'd be happy to have a conversation with you and send customers your way from around the country people are always asking us for good dealers and good people to work with in the car business we'd be happy to promote you 
Juan Sotomayor writes, Hi, Kevin. Thank you for all the content you have provided over the course of time and the amazing job you have done in growing this channel. Your viewers appreciate you. Well, thank you for that, Juan. Question, what do you do when the salesperson tells you they are a one-price store and that no negotiations are accepted? Many stores are moving to this model like CarMax, Carvana, and Room, which means we would be getting up and walking out. While the online stores are easy to determine if they are a one-price store, how do we know if the actual dealer we are visiting with is a one-price store or not? Here's the thing I'd say about these no haggle dealerships, one price stores, etc. It's quite often falls under the umbrella of no haggle, but it's only on the price of the car. It doesn't mean that you won't be barraged from finance with fees and products and all that sort of thing. And one of the things that I tell car buyers, if you put too much attention on car price, if that becomes the whole reason, the whole motivating force or that one influencing factor, car price, that causes you to make a decision, you will make huge mistakes in the finance office beyond this. So think about these models. He mentions Carvana and Vroom and CarMax. Think about these no haggle places. Ask yourself this question. What is their process following the sale? If there's nothing there and there's no headache there, I would be giving more consideration to a business model like that than somebody who just simply says we're a no haggle store. Because for the most part, the no haggle or one price model doesn't mean you're going to get out of the store without headaches. Francis writes, my daughter is about to buy her first car. Thanks for all the information. We have a better chance for a better deal. Thanks again, Francis. Appreciate your comments. But that's exactly why we produce videos here on this channel. We want to give everyone a better chance for a better deal ahead in the future. Pop Rock writes, I would love to wear a shirt or hat. Is that the best you can do to a dealership? They're so dirty, you could take a leak on them and they'd be cleaner for it. <laughs> That's pretty good. You can get, is that the best you can do? They're right on the merch shelf right below us here on the video broadcast. Click on any one of those designs there and choose, uh, is that the best you can do shirt to wear to the dealership? And then, you know what? Send us a photo of you in the dealership with your new car once you've done your car deal. And I'd love to see you with that shirt on. We may well send you a nice gift if you send us that photo. Paul writes, this is all BS. Well, Paul, you didn't quite hit the nail on the head. It's not BS. It's actually super high intensity training like Tom Fish writes. So Kevin, why are you always giving us super high intensity training? And Mark says, Kevin is so full of super high intensity training. In fact, he's got so much, he wants to share it with us. You guys, that is exactly why we say super high intensity training. Because some folks in the car business come on the channel and say, this guy is full of SHIT. So we just had a little fun with it, turned the acronym into super high intensity training. And of course, that's what we give you all the time on the Homework Guy channel. So yes, we are full of it, super high intensity training. And we plan to give you a lot more of it in the days ahead. Also, for those of you who would like your own, there is a sweatshirt hoodie on the merch shelf down below. And it has best car super high intensity training on YouTube and the acronyms right there on the front. You'll love it. If you appreciated the broadcast today, consider giving us a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy. Share the video on social media with your friends and family and make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter too. You play a key part of getting the message out to the masses. We also post notifications and other updates on our other social media sites and answer car buyer questions there too. If you love what we do and want to say thanks for the tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links you see here will be easy to find in the description box down below. This is just one of the ways the Homework Guy team helps to fund the production and behind-the-scenes work to make our videos possible. So, thanks in advance for your support. Many of you have done that, and we greatly appreciate it. I do want to make something clear, though, because there's been a little confusion on this. You cannot hire us for any services, as pointed out earlier. If you want to send a tip, it's just that, a tip saying thanks. We appreciate that a lot, but you haven't hired us for anything. I think the tons of free information we put out there for you guys says it all. We're here to help car buyers, and we don't want you to get ripped off in the process. Also, remember if you'd like to be featured on an upcoming broadcast to share a car buying experience, or if you're one of the good guys in the car business trying to make a positive difference, well, send us an email to info at thehomeworkguy.com and put guest appearance request in the subject line. My staff forwards these emails directly to me. Perhaps you'll be the next one to show up on our channel among all the pretty faces you see here on our broadcast. I also wanted today to give a shout out to Yuri and Jacob on the Straight Pipes channel on YouTube. We're in discussion for a number of joint projects with them. So go visit their channel today and say hello from the Homework Guy community in their comment section. They do incredible car reviews 
of all the greatest vehicles on the market. Go check them out. Thanks everyone for joining us today. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care everyone.